on the last episode of Veritas Yosh. Wooper faced off against a gauntlet of grass types, a dude named Joe Cox, questionable game design, existential crisis, a bird, dragons, and its stupid ass trainer. Have you ever attempted to beat a Pokemon game with only a Wooper? Probably not. Most people aren't dumb enough to actually try that, right? I am though. Hi, my name is Yosh, and I became the champion of Pokemon Heart Gold while only using a Wooper. If you want to see how I was able to do that, you can click up here or in the description to see my previous video in this series. But to sum it up, it took a lot of grinding and a lot of resetting the Nintendo DS. However, my journey isn't over yet. Today, Wooper becomes Mr. Worldwide. I still have to travel across the Kanto region, collect all eight gym badges there, and challenge the most powerful trainer ever. This absolute son of a bitch. Anyways, here's a quick recap of the rules for this challenge. Basically, I can only use Wooper in battle, and I'm not allowed to use items from my bag in battle. Let me reiterate that for you all once again. No items. No potions, no X items, none of that. So watch as I tell the story of how Wooper quite literally broke the fabric of time and space and defied the will of God, all to beat a silly little Pokemon challenge. Wait, whatever you're selling, I ain't buying, yo. Well... Hey, Johto Champ, your region must be a joke. A Wooper? Seriously? Come up to this mountain and I'll show you how a real trainer fights. Okay, bye. My name is Skylar White, yo. <sighs> My husband is Walter White, yo. Again? Really? Uh -huh. Why? God. Professor Elm saw the absolute travesty that just occurred on the television screen and gave us a boat ticket that let us travel to the Kanto region. We departed from Olivine City and got some much needed rest on the boat until we were awoken by some kids stomping on the floor upstairs, a classic hotel experience. After getting the kid to shut up, we arrived in Viridian City and I beelined straight towards the gym. We weren't messing around this time. Our first victim was the electric gym leader, Lieutenant Surge. Let me remind you really quickly that Wooper is part ground type and has a move that utilizes the power of continental plates. Wow! Electric. So cool, dude. So awesome. You really got me there. The zaps go poof, and Wooper earns the first gym badge of Kanto. Time for a quick reminder. These are Wooper's base stats. And yeah, they're not great. Last time, I showed that these stats make him weaker than a literal rat. Today, I have prepared a montage of Pokemon that are more powerful than Wooper. This stupid owl. An olive. Literally a baby. A bird. This other bird. Another goddamn bird. Young Goose. The bug that literally just rolls shit. Like, literally, that's all it does. Oh my god. Surskit! So yeah, that's what Wooper's stats look like. Me and Wooper went north to Saffron City, through a really stupid maze, to challenge Sabrina, the psychic gym leader. Surely this one would be a piece of cake just like last time, right? The Alakazam is faster and has energy ball. So... Yeah. So how do you think we got out of this one? Yeah, we just spammed Earthquake again, but also got lucky with the funny Quick Claw. Ha. Nice. Two badges down, and I feel like I have just returned to hell. Not just because I'm already barely winning battles because of pure luck, but because I am literally in hell. It's really hot down here. Please consider subscribing to the channel so I can buy an air conditioner. Do it for Wooper. She's stuck down here too. Anyways, what was I talking about? Before I can challenge the Cerulean Gym, I have to do all this random stuff, because for some reason, when I walk into the gym, there's nobody there. So I walk up the bridge and to the right to see if I can find the gym leader, and she wasn't there. Great! Time to check the International Gamer Network to see what to do. 
Apparently there's some shady stuff going on at the power plant, so after using Flash for the first time in this entire game to get through Rock Tunnel, we surfed over to the plant and learned that someone straight up stole a whole generator, and apparently the entire region is in shambles. After some dude stole a generator, I just want to point that out, he stole a generator. We go back to the gym and see some random Team Rocket guy who stole an entire generator, by the way, from a power plant. And he makes a daring escape, which has me wondering where to go for like five minutes until I find him on the bridge. We beat him up, he returns the generator, all is right in the world, yada yada, but the gym is still empty. So I walked up the bridge and through the forest and I find Misty on a date and she is upset with me for interrupting her? You are employed! Do your job, please! So finally, after all of that, I went into the Cerulean City Gym and challenged the leader of the water gym, Misty. This fight was surprisingly difficult because none of Wooper's moves are very good against water types, you know, because he's a water type. Also, I somehow never thought of this before, but for this entire playthrough my Wooper has had the ability Damp, which prevents explosions instead of Water Absorb, which is way better. I don't think God wanted me to do this. Wooper beat Golduck easily with Earthquake. But Lapras took multiple hits to take down and had Ice Beam, which froze Wooper a few times. Starmie was faster and also had Ice Beam, but eventually Wooper got through it too. But nothing could prepare us for what was next. Yo! I would like to formally announce that me and Misty are now BFFs, best friends with Whoopers forever. And because we are now such good friends, she just gave me the badge. Which is surprisingly not the only time she's done that. When I first got to Kanto, I was worried about four different trainers that could cause major problems for my run. The next gym leader would be the first of the true Elite Four, Erica, the grass type specialist. If you would like an update on why grass is very bad and should be avoided at all times, please refer to this graph and accompanying diagram. Let's just get this one over with. Erica leads with Jump Fluff, which is faster and knows Leech Seed, which can be pretty scary. After that is Victory Bell, who is also faster but knows a one-hit KO Leaf Storm. Tangela is next, but like, it's Tangela, it's not a problem. Her ace is a super tanky Blossom that can also kill Wooper in one hit. Wooper knows Ice Beam, which is super effective, but it's still a pretty tough battle. I gave Wooper the Choice Scarf for this fight, which is a held item that increases her speed but only lets her use one move, so we can hopefully just spam Ice Beam and hope for the best. Somehow, after just a few minutes as opposed to multiple hours like normal, Wooper got the Dream Luck. Freezes. Wow. If nobody got me, I know Whooper got me. Can I get an amen in the comments? Next up was the Fuchisa City Gym and its powerful Poison-type Pokemon. Poison is a pretty powerful and effective thing to use against both humans and animals. But fortunately, Whooper was able to turn into the one and only Heisenberg, the legendary kingpin of the drug industry. Wooper was able to utilize the Albuquerque Desert to his advantage and give gym leader Janine the most effective poison of all, methamphetamine. If you can't tell by this point, my brain just straight up not doesn't work anymore, so sorry, my bad. <laughs> the normal path towards Cinnabar Island was blocked off, which means our next stop would be in Pewter City, home of some Brock Hard Rock types. However, the game had other plans for us. The only way to get there was through Diglett Cave, which had a Snorlax blocking the way. In order to move the Snorlax, we had to get the Pokey Flute sound thing from the radio tower in 
in Lavender Town, but they just weren't letting me get it there for some reason. Apparently, I haven't completed the side quest from hell earlier, because apparently, I had to actually click on this random spot in the Cerulean Gym to find the generator and return it to the power plant. Oh boy. So we finally got the thing and used it to gently nudge Snorlax out of the way before arriving in Pewter. Rock time? Oh yeah. Fun fact, water. Listen, I know this isn't too interesting, but come on. It's a water ground type versus a rock trainer. I deserve the break after having to get through everything else this wretched game has thrown at me. Wooper and I trekked through the forest and passed through Viridian City and Pallet Town, all while I was unaware of the fact that my super cool BRB smile text was still up on my stream. By the way, this whole run was streamed live, previously on Twitch, but considering what the current state of that website is, I'm streaming on YouTube now. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see the worst streams you'll ever witness. Very cool. Very cool reference. No After a long swim, we arrived at Cinnabar Island, home of the Fire Gym. Or so I thought. Apparently it got destroyed by a volcano eruption, which to me just sounds like someone chose a bad place for a gym. So, after swimming around some more, we ended up in an ice cave fighting yet another legendary bird. He's mad because I took down his homie earlier in the game. Want a box too? Fine. Fine, let's box. Let's box. Critical hit, wow. What a legendary Pokemon. Mama said knock you out. I'm gonna knock you out. Stand no chance. <laughs> Against a whooper. So I made it out of the cave, swam around some more, and realized that I was lost. Turns out the gym was at the beginning of the cave. Up this up this ladder that I just passed. The story of Yosh being a dumb, stupid idiot trainer continues. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> Anyways, gym time. Fire hot. Water cold. Water wet? I don't know. Me press super effective. Snail die. Monkey. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Again, I know it doesn't seem that hard, but that was the end of the easy part. Now, only three trainers stand in Wooper's way of complete domination of the world. Two of them were brand new, powerful threats, but the other was an old rival. Joe! <laughs> this motherfucker followed me here. I cannot believe this. That's right, it's Joe Cox. He's back. Oh yeah, baby. Joe Cox and the Cox crew have returned in a new movie coming to theaters near you. Ever since we started this journey, Joe Cox and his stupid Meganium have been the absolute bane of my existence. It's finally time to get some revenge. Luckily, since we had already fought him a bunch of times before, Wooper had the strat locked in. First, use Substitute against the Sneasel because it can't break it, then take it down with Earthquake. The Substitute usually lets us get two free hits on Meganium, which comes up next. But Sleepy Joe had a trick up his sleeve. Meganium had leveled up enough to become faster than Wooper, meaning that we could only get one free hit from it. This time, we had to hope for a lucky freeze or crit, which is what thankfully ended up happening. After Meganium, the rest of his mods are pretty easy to deal with as long as you're careful. Just like that, Joe Cox has been knocked down once again, leaving us with two more battles. However, these two trainers are known as two of the strongest trainers in Pokemon history. Blue and Red. Blue is the gym leader of Vermilion City, and his fight is an absolute nightmare for Wooper. He leads with Executor, a grass type with Leaf Storm, which always kills in one hit. Previously, Wooper was able to get past these powerful grass types by setting up on early Pokemon, but Blue leads with Executor. This means that the only way Wooper is making it past this thing is by getting lucky with a crit or a freeze. 
Arcanine comes out next, which has Dragon Pulse and Extreme Speed, two moves that don't outright kill but are still very dangerous. Wooper's Earthquake often won't kill it in one hit on low rolls, making this Pokemon last much longer than it should. Pidgeot is yet another threat like Arcanine in the way that it chips down on your health with high accuracy powerful moves. However, Pidgeot also known as Air Slash, which has the chance of flinching. The best thing Wooper can use against this bird is Ice Beam. Rhydon, haha, is next, and it's the only Pokemon that is not any sort of threat. It's slower than Wooper and gets killed in one shot by a four times super effective waterfall. Machamp is another tricky one like Arcanine and Pidgeot, but more dangerous than them. Dynamic Punch is very powerful and can confuse Wooper, and if Wooper ends up hitting itself in confusion, the run is basically dead. Finally, Blue has a Gyarados waiting at the end. Gyarados is one of the biggest threats against Wooper in this entire run, as three powerful trainers have one, and against Wooper specifically, it's a massive tank. Earthquake is useless because of the flying typing, Waterfall isn't great because of the water typing, making Ice Beam the only somewhat viable option to use for damage. By the time you get to it at the end, you just have to pray for good luck. So, how did Wooper do? Short answer, not great. After an hour of failed attempts, with most of them ending in turn 1 to an Executor Leaf Storm, I decided that Wooper's moveset just won't cut it at this point. Substitute is not useful in the final two fights, so I opted to visit the casino and buy a new move. Double Team Every time you use this move, Wooper gains evasion, which lets him dodge attacks. With enough of these stacked up, Wooper can be dodging countless attacks back to back, letting him survive for much longer than otherwise. The move isn't going to be super useful in the blue fight, but it's still good to get now. I also put a new held item on Wooper, Shell Bell. This heals a little bit of Wooper's health every time he successfully does damage to a Pokemon. The small amount of health this gives Wooper is needed in a battle as close as this one. However, there is one other thing I want to grab. I felt that Ice Beam simply wouldn't cut it at this point in the game. It's a special attack on a physical attacker with an abysmally low special attack stat. Blizzard is also a special attack. It has higher power with the trade-off of significantly worse accuracy. So, what could Wooper possibly replace Ice Beam with? Well, there's Ice Punch. It does more damage than Ice Beam because of the physical attacking, which can make a big difference in this fight. However, there's only one place where you can obtain Ice Punch, the Battle Frontier. I'm not gonna try to explain the Battle Frontier because honestly, I don't really get it. All I know is that Ice Punch costs 64 BP and you get BP from competing in different battle competitions. In order to get the needed points, I grinded the Battle Hall, a format that conveniently only lets you choose one Pokemon, who goes against other single Pokemon. I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but basically, you just keep fighting and winning until you get a streak, then you beat the powerful lady and get a bunch of points. After a long, treacherous, and very exhausting journey, we finally gathered enough points to buy Ice Punch and replace Ice Beam with it on Wooper. So, we went back to the Vermilion Gym, challenged Blue, and lost to the Executor again. Okay, I know it wouldn't make too much of a difference, but I wasn't expecting that anyways. It's gonna be tough, and it's gonna take a while. At this point, I have realized that this run doesn't really prioritize strategy, and instead of being a test of strength and intelligence, it's just a test of pure endurance. How much time are you willing to sink into hours of failed attempts at trying to get past a dumb, stupid tree? Others have tried and failed, but I am simply built different. Eventually, after many failed attempts and many month-long breaks, the perfect run happened.
Uh, hello, officer? Yeah, uh, I'd like to report a large quantity of illegal oil owned by the leader of the Vermilion Gym. Uh, no, I don't think he has a mineral license. Thanks. With that fight out of the way, it's finally time for the main event. After climbing Mount Silver and reaching the summit, we reach the fight that you've all been waiting for. Wooper versus Red, the strongest trainer in Pokemon history against one Wooper. Who is stronger? While all of the other trainers in this game have Pokemon up to the high level 50s, all of Red's Pokemon are at least level 80. That is insane. Let's go over all his Pokemon really quick. Red leads with his highest level Pokemon, Pikachu. Pikachu's electric attacks can't hit Wooper, which leaves him with two moves that are still quite powerful against it. Iron Tail and Quick Attack. Iron Tail can lower Wooper's defense, and even without it, it still takes large chunks out of Wooper's health, with the downside being that it has low accuracy. This is the weakest Pokemon in Red's arsenal, and without it coming out first, this fight would probably be completely impossible for Wooper. Every other Pokemon that Red has will kill Wooper in a single hit. The next Pokemon to come out is Venusaur, another grass type who is the most dangerous Pokemon in this entire challenge. It will always take several attacks from Wooper to take it down, and any of Venusaur's attacks will kill. The next few Pokemon are all very similar to Venusaur in that regard, as it will always take multiple hits to take down Blastoise, Lapras, and then Snorlax, while they will all take Wooper down in one. Even Charizard, Red's final Pokemon and the only one weak to one of Wooper's moves besides Pikachu, will take multiple waterfalls to defeat. Along with this, the Red fight takes place on the summit of Mount Silver, where it is always snowing. This means that the fight gets permanent hail. Yeah, permanent hail that deals damage to Wooper every turn. Red just so happens to also be a complete genius, because he also decided to put Blizzard, a move that never misses in Hail, on three of his Pokemon. If you can't tell, we're gonna be here for a while. This is a fight that goes beyond pure skill, strategy, and luck. We need all three in order to win. To beat this guy, we needed to come up with a strategy good enough to let Wooper barely pull through at the end. How can we do it? Well, there are three things we need. 1. Double Team This is where the true power of this move comes to fruition. Since Pikachu is weak to Earthquake and primarily uses a low accuracy move against Wooper, this makes him the perfect specimen to spam 6 double teams on, leaving Wooper with a max evasion stat to help him get through the remaining 5 Pokemon. If Pikachu wasn't Red's lead Pokemon, this fight would be near impossible. However, there are still some problems with this strategy, with the deadliest being the hail will still hit Wooper no matter what, along with the guaranteed blizzards. This is where number two comes in. Rain Dance. The only practical way that we can get rid of the hail is to set up our own weather condition. For Wooper, that would be Rain Dance, which Wooper can learn and doesn't do any damage to any Pokemon on the field. Learning this move is definitely worth it to get rid of the hail, but this poses a problem. We had to get rid of one of Wooper's moves in order to learn Rain Dance. In the end, I decided to have Wooper forget Ice Punch. In this fight, its only good use is against Venusaur. Earthquake is Wooper's best move, even doing a good bit of damage against Venusaur, and Waterfall is powerful and needed against Charizard. However, this leads us to yet another problem. Earthquake can only be used 10 times, and Waterfall is not very effective against three very bulky Pokemon, two of them being water types. How can we get the most powerful Earthquakes and Waterfalls possible? Number 3. Metronome. That's right, the held item that won us the fight against Lance is back. The way this item works is that the more times a move is used in a row, the stronger it gets. This will let us get the most value and power out of our very limited amount of damaging moves. So here's the full strategy. Turn 1, Wooper sets up Rain Dance to immediately get rid of the permanent hail. After that, Wooper uses 6 double teams against Pikachu, while it hopefully misses most of its Iron Tails. Next, we spam Earthquake. Metronome will allow us to take down Pikachu, Venusaur, Blastoise, and Lapras all in a row with only 10 Earthquakes. While this happens, Wooper needs to dodge every single attack that is used against him. If he gets hit once, he dies. 
Once Wooper runs out of earthquakes, Snorlax should be coming in. Wooper spans waterfall against Snorlax as it hopefully misses all of its attacks, powering up every time against the bulky bastard. Finally, Charizard comes out, and just like in the fight against Champion Lance, Wooper just needs to dodge an attack. This plan will require perfect execution of the strategy along with a godly amount of luck. Me and Wooper spent hours just trying to get through Red. This fight pushed our endurance to the absolute limit, but on one fateful attempt, Wooper finally did it. Okay, next time I go up against it, I am reciting the prayers once more. Go, my son. Defeat Red so you can finally be forgiven of your unholy crimes against the state. Finally, after countless failed attempts, many rage quits, and several long breaks from the game, me and my Wooper did it. We conquered everything this game has to offer. I know that at the end of the day this is just a silly little challenge and a silly little game made for children, but I'm still proud of myself. I believe that I'm the first and only person, on YouTube at least, to actually complete this challenge, and I'm proud of that. I owe it all to this little dude. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Unfortunately, this journey is still not over, as we have one more challenge to take on. One that is harder than any other in any Pokemon game. That's right. One Wooper versus a billion lions, baby. Who's gonna win? Oh yeah, tune into the next episode to see. Surely if one Wooper can do all of this, then a billion lions could too, right?